the common question that always arises is PyTorch versus TensorFlow. It's like the big question, the two two big frameworks. Um, Eli, do you want to uh, maybe go a little bit into depth uh, why you have chosen PyTorch and not TensorFlow? Because the book says deep learning with PyTorch, obviously. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things that, that and, and this is kind of a, a dodge in some senses, um, uh, one of the things that the that the uh, the founders of PyTorch have tried really hard to do is not turn it into an us versus them, like, you know, up with PyTorch, down with TensorFlow kind of a thing. Um, I, I thought it was really interesting that uh, Sumit Chintala talked about how uh, the convergence of a lot of these frameworks, you know, eager mode and that kind of thing was actually, he, he in his view, a loss for the deep learning community. He thought that having a wide variety of approaches and philosophies was healthy for the ecosystem. Um, I personally was drawn to PyTorch uh, b because uh, because of its I don't want to say simplicity, uh, but it, it's it's it felt very natural coming from a Python background that didn't include explicit ML experience. The the ramp into PyTorch felt very easy. Um, it didn't feel like I had to learn a new way to think or a new way to code. I just showed up and started writing code and it worked out great. So. Mm. So you would say it's more py a more Pythonic way of actually approaching AI problems. Yeah, it, it definitely seems to be a, and this is somewhat ironic for a, a, a something that's based on a, on a, an extension to Lua, but it definitely feels very Pythonic in terms of um, when you call a function, that function executes rather than it building a graph that'll execute later kind of a thing. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Luca or Thomas, do you want um, to add anything here? Maybe Luca, if you want to go first. Yeah, I started off with uh, Torch 7, the predecessor of White Torch and I liked it because you could read the source code and figure out what was going on. It was very, very, very thin. Uh, it didn't have a real autograd, uh, but it let you, as I was picking up deep learning in general, it would let you understand what was going on. And then I used TensorFlow uh, for some time before PyTorch came out and uh, you know explored it a bit, little bit. Uh, the error messages weren't great. I mean, they, uh, it was certainly usable and many people used it and uh, we were using it at the company. But then when PyTorch came out, we jumped on it because we kind of knew Torch 7, we still had Torch 7 projects going on. And uh, and finally we could use the, the Python X system. And uh, at the beginning it was really uh, a Python uh, layer on top of the same uh, backend that Lua Torch had plus uh, the initial implementation of Autograd that was uh, kind of coming from Chainer. And um, and then it quickly evolved, but that initial period led me, uh, made me interested in contributing because I kind of know what, were, what was going on at the time. Um, so it was you know, very lucky for me to, to be able to you know, take part in those initial stages. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, yeah, as Eli said, it was great to have something that would fail the, uh, at the at the line that you made a mistake and not at some point later on and you had to look through a, a big stack of errors. Now, of course, after some time, uh, TensorFlow evolved with eager mode. So that now they look a lot like each other when you look at the code. Uh, but for the time, having a... Uh, you know, uh, uh, execute as you as you go. Uh, packaging, which you could even do autograd and stuff, was was great. Uh, so, and it had all the modules that I, that we needed at the time, like three D convolutions and so on. So, uh, it felt uh, a no brainer. Mm -hmm. Got it, Thomas. Yes. So I can. <laughs> say much about PyTorch versus TensorFlow because I've not used TensorFlow seriously for for quite a few years now. 
but uh, similar to uh, to Luca, it stumbled into PyTorch, uh, uh, and for me it was when PyTorch was uh, quite new, 0.1 something, and uh, somehow uh, it was cool to do things, but then you always hit into something where you thought, well, yeah, this could be improved, and uh, uh, the people that were there in particular, uh, I had lots of contacts with uh, Adam Paschke, who is uh, in Warsaw, uh, and uh, also the other people uh, uh, are based around the world. They were very nice, and so uh, I ended up uh, contributing a lot to, to PyTorch. Now I'm biased for the rest of my life. <laughs> mm -hmm.